This is the Periodic Table of the Elements, Part 2, How to Use the Table, from the CSET set of the Learning to Teach project. So here's the thing about the periodic table. It's periodic. That means there's a pattern to it. Well, several, actually. One part of the pattern involves the rows, this way. And it's this. As you go across rows, elements get heavier, more massive. The reason is, because as you go across, each element has more subatomic particles in it. So, potassium. Chemical symbol K. Don't ask me why it's K, not P. Okay, it's K for the Latin word kalium from the Arabic word alkalia, which means plant ashes, because it was first isolated as a mineral salt formed by extracting wood ashes with water. So potassium is K, not P, which is, by the way, phosphorus. But that's not important. Back to potassium. K. The big number, 39.0983. That's the atomic mass, how much potassium weighs. So 39.0983 atomic mass units. The number 19 is how many protons it has. It's also called the atomic number because how many protons it has is what defines it as the element potassium. All potassiums have 19 protons. If they had 20, they would be calcium, but they don't. They have 19, so potassium. So that's the first part of the pattern. As you go across rows, elements get more massive because they have more subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Notably, each step to the right adds exactly one proton and exactly one electron. This brings us to the second part of the pattern, which has to do not with rows, but with columns. All the elements in a given column have similar chemical properties. So, Potassium is chemically similar to sodium and lithium, and also to rubidium and cesium. Now, why should that be? Magic? Nope, not magic. Atomic structure. This is actually a cartoon version of an atom. It's not real. It looks like a tiny solar system with lots of orbiting planets. Misleading, actually. Atoms aren't really like tiny solar systems, but for some stuff, it's a useful model. Here's another cartoon atom with the protons and neutrons in the middle, and positively charged because of the protons in there. And electrons out here, orbiting the nucleus. Let's get specific here and put, say, three protons in the nucleus. Any atom with three protons is a lithium atom. And if it's got three protons, it's also got three electrons. But where to put them? You could try to stick them all in here, in this inner ring. Incidentally, these rings, they're called shells. But here's the thing about electrons. They're like magnets when they're aligned wrong. They don't like to be near each other. They repel. So they wouldn't all stay here in the inner shell, even if you crammed them all in there. Because it's too small. It only holds two. So the extra one? Hmm. It goes in the next shell. Now, let's add a bunch more protons to the nucleus. Say, eight more. Which transmutes lithium to sodium, because anything with 11 protons is sodium. Now, let's put in the electrons. If it's got 11 protons, it's also got 11 electrons. Well, actually, it could have more or fewer, in which case you'd call it an ion, but that's another video. So for now, 11 protons, 11 electrons. Turns out, this next shell, it's big enough to hold eight electrons. But not nine. Nine's too many. The extra one? Gotta go in the next shell out. All right, get ready for an aha moment. Here's sodium, one electron in the outer shell. And here's lithium chemically similar to sodium, and also with one electron in the outer shell. That's right! Atoms with the same number of outer electrons are chemically similar. Why? Because it's the outer electrons that are involved in chemical reactions. Aha! By the way, these outer electrons, they're called valence electrons. Now back to the table. Check this out. This first row, with hydrogen and helium in it, that's two elements, and the first shell holds two electrons. The second row, 
Lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon. That's eight elements. And the second shell holds eight electrons. So in other words, the periodic table is your best guide to where the electrons in a particular element go. You can also use the table to predict what reacts with what. Chemical reactions. Like sodium plus chlorine makes sodium chloride. Salt. How? Turns out that with shells, full atoms are stable. Almost full or almost empty is not stable. So take sodium, 11 protons in the nucleus, 11 electrons surrounding the nucleus in shells. One valence electron. That shell's almost empty, not stable. And chlorine, 17 protons in the nucleus, 17 electrons, 7 in the outer shell, a shell that can hold 8. So it's almost full, not stable. So when you put sodium and chlorine together, they work it out vigorously. Sodium gives up an electron, which gives it a full outer shell. And chlorine takes it in, which gives it a full outer shell too. The loss of an electron makes sodium positive, and the gain of an electron makes chlorine negative. And as you know, opposites attract. So sodium and chlorine stick together. Sodium chloride. Or what about water, H2O? Hydrogen needs only one electron to have a full outer shell, so it's not stable. Oxygen. Outer shell is almost full, has six in the outer shell, holds eight. Also not stable. So you get them close together and they work it out. But instead of swapping electrons like sodium chloride, they share them. And as long as the hydrogens and the oxygen stay close enough to each other to share their valence electrons, everything's cool. Cool water. So anyway, the periodic table. Useful, yeah? Okay, bye.